Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine. Thank you for accepting the invitation to this interview and welcome to Europa FM. President Zelensky has asked the US State Department to recognize Russia as a terrorist state. How would this change the course of the war? Uh, well, I think that would change the course of uh, geopolitics generally because uh, uh, basically it is important to call the things by their names. And if it's a whole state which supports other kind of conducts the terroristic acts uh, against the other states or massively against civilian population, uh, it is uh, absolutely essential to Uh, pass through this very last barrier and recognize Russia finally, the terrorist state, uh, with all the f- fiscal uh, and uh, other um, consequences uh, of this decision that would affect a, another approach towards business relations with Russia, another approach towards placement Russia in the general, uh, general geopolitical agenda of the world. So, and uh, basically this would be the first step of uh, holding uh, Russia accountable for the crimes and massive terror caused uh, by Russian Federation on our soil for more than 160 days. Do you have information that this will happen? Well, this is a, a sovereign decision of the of the United States, but uh, I, I have uh, all I'm confirming that the Congress is standing full Um, working on this decision and uh, just recently you were following I'm sure the visit of the uh, Olena Zelenska to the United States and the, the discussion followed by that visit uh, um, by uh, for in favor of taking this uh, decision um, at this stage where uh, it is absolutely clear that Ukraine is provided military support and we're fighting this war on ourselves on our soil Um, international community does not have that many instruments to deter Russia. And I think uh, that uh, taking the decision on uh, stating that Russia is a terrorist state is one of the few legal instruments still, still available to uh, increase the price of this war for Russian Federation. Thus, uh, it should be, um, this decision should be taken. And this is a very strong instrument. Yes, uh, yes, it would. Uh, this is the instrument which would have uh, uh, immediate effect by, by taking this decision, but also the uh, multiplication effect, uh, which would cause enormous financial uh, financial risks for the transactions and having business generally with the with the Russian Federation, including business and gas and oil sector, which is traditionally known as an instrument of the of the Russian war. So, uh, so it's like much more than a very specific or targeted individual or business sanctions is generally an approach to a country which will will affect uh, a lot of risks for taking any uh, business activity or any activity with this state. I also reveal a few, uh, but still a number of instruments within UN in terms of making deals with Russia and negotiating with Russia on anything. Last week, the Russians attacked a prison in Donbass and killed dozens of prisoners. Uh, what does this attack mean? How far can Russia go in this war? Uh, well, I have to unfortunately say that Russia has already gone as far as it uh, wasn't even possible to imagine. Uh, it's, uh, it's a brutal murder of dozens and dozens of people. It's a breach of arrangement on the exchange of hostages and a breach of each and every possible rule and the word of the humanitarian law. So uh, it all only answers the question that uh, whether there is uh, a potential possibility of a deal with the Russian Federation. No, there is no potential in this deal. It should be only held accountable, stopped by military by diplomatic, by any case it is possible, until uh, until uh, all of the actions which are left un, 
uh, unpunished taken by Russian Federation, like massive murder in Olenivka or shelling of residential buildings and uh, and train malls uh, in the middle of the day with the, the hundreds of people there are left unaccountable. As long as there is no responsibility by sanctions, there is no responsibility by tribunal or anything as regards Russia or recognition of Russia as a terrorist state, it legitimizes whatever they do. So uh, it's now our joint responsibility and first and foremost of the United Western democracies to, uh, to hesitate not for a moment uh, in terms of strengthening the sanctions, in terms of uh, cutting off uh, gas dependency of the Russian Federation and also recognizing Russia as a terrorist state and pushing for UN system to enforce this decision to the extent it is possible. What can Romania do more for Ukraine? Uh, I think Romania has already played a crucial role in uh, supporting uh, Ukraine, uh, both in terms of sanctions, in terms of military support, but also uh, the crucial role of uh, Romania has already taken place in preserving the food security globally around the world because together with Romania, uh, we managed to uh, release a, a huge uh, amount of uh, grains through the Danube region and also through the green corridors of solidarity established by our customs. This is already a huge role uh, which has been played. But uh, at this stage, each voice matters, uh, pushing for uh, a strong sanctions against Russian federal through European Union instruments, providing Ukraine more military support and advocating for this support with other countries is absolutely essential. Do you expect Russia to respect the agreement on grain transportation? No deal with Russia is should be expected to be uh, to be implemented unless they follow their own interests. Uh, this deal has not been signed between Ukraine and Russia, and this uh, also um, serves as a sort of a, a trigger for the particular personal responsibility of the United Nations and UN Secretary General, who's undertaken the obligation uh, uh, to guarantee this deal implemented. Uh, at this stage, we see that Ukraine fulfills uh, all the conditions to release uh, the first grain, uh, grain, uh, uh, grain ship. I, I want to come back to Romania. Uh, is there any specific area where Romania can help Ukraine? Well, to make sure that uh, we are able to integrate ourselves in EU, we should uh, be effective in uh, uh, defending ourselves and uh, and stopping Russian Federation. So, increase military assistance and uh, advocating for increasing this assistance through other partners, not only Romania, is absolutely essential. Put more sanction pressure without delays uh, and building this consensus uh, within European Union over the sanctions against Russian Federation, which could increase significantly the price of this war, but also deter Russia, is essential. But of course, uh, we are looking forward for cooperation with the Romanian government in terms of moving forward uh, towards issues related to the membership of Ukraine in European Union. And we hope that together with the Moldova, um, we will uh, be soon in a position to start the accession negotiations and hope that our neighboring countries would really be the biggest advocates of that process. I remember a picture with you from the day when uh, Ukraine was invited to join the European Union. You in your office in Kiev in tears. How was that day for you? Uh, indeed, these were uh, the tears, uh, tears of understanding that uh, this is the first ever decision uh, on uh, legally starting, legally starting the process of uh, joining the European Union. The first decision which has been taken towards Ukraine over the the thirty years before we had only promises and memories. This has been the first formal decision paving the way of Ukraine uh, back to the family of European nations. So it, it wasn't possible at all to, to have no emotions in that regard. And uh, for now, uh, there is an understanding that uh, the way, uh, uh, the 30 years way to make this decision on 24, 23rd of 
of uh, June has only the uh, has only been the beginning. So we restart our processes within the country. There's much more to do. Uh, in terms of the legal approximation, in terms of greater integration into EU single market and readjustment of our institutions towards the European track. This is a long way to go, uh, but we are ready and we hope that the political unity uh, will be there to start the negotiations and to um, to accept Ukraine in the in family of European nations uh, the same strong as it was on 23rd of June and on our side we have already self uh, self obliged ourselves to uh, do everything possible on our side to make sure that this happens as soon as possible. I'm sure you have a plan to follow the reforms. Uh, what will be the hardest? Uh, administrative reform, human rights, corruption... Well, largely, we are very much advanced in all areas related to to the various freedoms and, and human rights and preserving the human rights mechanisms, although the biggest challenges would be structural economic reforms, but also completing the reforms related to the rule of law. Uh, because technically we will uh, complete all the necessary steps in terms of reselection of judges, reestablishment of the judicial institutions already by the end of the year. But the biggest challenge is to make sure that these institutions are working in the spirit of the rule of law. And here is the long way forward. But um, I'm sure that at this stage, over these months, we are putting the very strong basis together with the uh, with our uh, partners to, to make sure that the ru- rule of law is, is transformed something from the uh, letters uh, in the in in the legal acts to a spirit of uh, of the justice generally delivered in in my country. This would be the most complicated way. To, to, to have the spirit of the rule of law in the country. But I think that we're doing pretty well in that regard. And this is the demand of our people and our civil society, which leaves us no room for maneuver except of the success. I'm sure it will be a long process. How long do you think it will take? Uh, you know, there is a huge difference uh, in um, various experiences of other countries before Ukraine, because before getting the status of the candidate country, we have already undergone through a huge amount of transformation. And uh, and uh, it is already confirmed, uh, basically, even in the opinion of uh, the European Commission, confirming that uh, we largely comply with the criteria for membership. So, and we have already... A uh, very strong and capable administration and the governance, and basically, uh, we have managed to preserve the full governance of the state from local to central region in under the full scale war started on 24th of February, which uh, which states uh, that we have a strong resilience of of the administrations. So, uh, so uh, if it comes to the homework which should be done by Ukraine, we are able to do it fast, efficient, and without delay. So the, uh, the the only thing left is the political will to recognize our successes and assess us formally and to make political decision for Ukraine to join the EU and hope it will be the political leaders of EU to do it within 10 years. If it wasn't the war, do you think Ukraine would still be waiting for candidate status? I think uh, that basically, uh, if it wasn't the war, Probably we wouldn't be brave enough to apply for membership, uh, but uh, uh, and and to basically start this discourse and unblock the discussion even on the Western Balkans and reshuffle all the discourse on on the enlargement. Um, so I think that uh, this was the only right decision we have taken uh, in terms of European integration on a fifth day of war. That we never knew uh, that. Once in the morning, you can wake up under the full-scale war in your soil, and everything you've been doing and building could be simply destroyed on a daily basis. So for us, it was really important to set in stone the country we love, the country we built, and the country we want to see. So, um, so that's why we applied for membership. I'm not sure that we would be as, um, let's say, courageous if it wasn't the war, and if we were not feeling that we are losing a lot of what we gained and built over the years. So I would put it this way. How difficult it is to rule a country while that country is being bombed by the Russian army and the main priority is to save people's lives? 
well, how you're putting it, it's about uh, saving people's life and making sure that they can survive, that you can relieve uh, their suffering and you, that you can defend, uh, defend uh, your land. And none of the members of the government has been hesitating in a second when the war started. Uh, we just made a united, clear decision uh, that we have to do everything to support our president in, in his fight and his being chief of command and to make sure that we preserve fully operational government to, to address everything, every challenge we face in these times of war. So there were no fear. There was only dedication and a great honor of being a member of the government actually in a time of war and being obliged to do everything you can to release the pain of the people and to protect your land. So it is, of course, a, a huge challenge, a personal challenge for every, every leader and politician in the, in the government, but the mostly is the honor of being able to do something to bring your country close to, to the victory and to do something for your people and for your nation. How did the war change your life? Well, if I would say that... Uh, the life which existed before 24th of February does not any ex exist anymore and uh, it will never be the, be the same. Um, the war has opened my eyes to, to many things. I, I wasn't maybe praising that much in my life, like, like uh, the time with my family. Uh, and uh, the, the biggest wish I have right now is to reunite with my kids which are now not with me for for very clear reasons and i hope that soon we will be able to to see each other and to be reunited do you have a message from ukrainians refugees from romania can they go back home uh, there are some areas which are deoccupied and they are relatively safe so it's it's the decision uh, And of course, everybody has to take individually. And we know that many people are coming back. Uh, yesterday, I had a meeting with Irva Johansson. She is a, a European commissioner for migration. And we agreed to have the joint communication on the security conditions for those citizens of Ukraine who want to come back to the territory of Ukraine. Although uh, we should not bear an illusion that there are some absolutely safe areas in Ukraine, any city any village can be subjected to air attacks and we see it all and this is unfortunately the reality we, we will all be facing for months and months ahead even if the breakthrough in the war and our victory will take place in any perspective soon the uh, the threat of being under air attacks will remain for a pretty long period of time thank you very much thank you so much Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine.